HD collection. Five minutes. <laughs> More than enough. Yeah! What's next? Wow, okay, so you got a bunch of people bitching on forums, pretty pissed off regarding DMC. I mean, an invasion on Metacritic, the user score is at 3.5, it started at 2.7. You got me bewitched. I'm pretty sure that's like one, a few people just posting on multiple accounts. As I check, they all have one review on their history hating on DMC. In fact, the multiple versions of it. Okay, this is this is ridiculous, guys, okay? Is it as good of a game as some critics are saying and scoring? No, it's not. But does it deserve twos and zeros? Angry fanboys are giving it? Hell fucking no! And I take offense to those fucking idiots who have no idea what a 1 out of 10 game is really like. This is what you get. Head down, Watch out, grenade! As for perfect scores and praise, I also have a feeling that those people didn't bother to replay the game on a higher difficulty, or maybe they haven't played a previous DMC game, where, you know, if they play it on the higher difficulty, some of the gameplay problems appear when everything isn't easy as hell mode. So, obviously, you gotta talk about the controversy, okay? When you got a new art team, talented, and you come up with a new concept for the way an iconic character will look, you always run the risk of angering your fan base and a alienating your fans. And you could leave the character looking the same, which it probably would have been awesome if they did, but then it wouldn't really be a reboot, would it? No. So they want to make their mark on the franchise and still make people happy with the new design. But you have to keep in mind, whatever you make, it's only going to please a percentage of the people, not all of them. 
but how many? 70, 60, 40, 20%? How many do you think are pleased with this look? We may never really know, but it's a tough call. You go with whatever you think is best. However, it's my judgment that the new Dante looks stupid. My name is Dante. No, I'm not gonna judge the entire game based on Dante's look, but I hate the new Dante. Where before we had this light-hearted, pizza-loving, half-demon devil slayer mercenary who craved a good adventure and challenge with some smart Alec one-liners. Wow, I've never seen a talking mud before. You know, in a dog show, you definitely take first place. You want me? You can make a buckle of me! Easy, Fido. How about I take you out for a walk? Come on, puppy. Let's go. You'll regret this, you worm! It's showtime. Come on. Now we have a half-demon, half-angel, potty mouth teeny bopper. I helped you back there. I didn't ask for your help. Who looks like he does meth, has lots of casual sex, and just doesn't give a fuck. What makes you think I give a shit? Know, the kind that your sister would like in those bands that claim to be metal. Is he a well-designed character? A bad designed character? Well, that's all subjective, okay? But in my opinion, he's not to my liking. The main character of the whole freaking game is unappealing. So, and what is with the white-haired wig joke? I mean, it makes no sense. It comes out of nowhere. It's really like a blatant slap in the face to fans. So I'm supposed to believe that a long-haired wig just happened to fly by at a devastated carnival landing on your head perfectly, right? No! It's clearly just there to say, fuck you guys, we think the new emo Dante is better. Eat our shit. Nice, ninja. You must be a witch. Virgil has it worse, where he was once driven mad with power after failing to protect his mother. He now simply thinks a, a tortured soul may be possibly redeemable if you could just talk to him or, or slap some sense into him. But here, he just thinks that humanity is below him and he has zero honor. An element that was crucial to making his character, this villain, a character that we can love. He shoots a female demon in the back, blasting her womb and baby bits to pieces. Then he pauses for a moment to let it sink into her head that he just shot her baby, and then shoots her in the head. What the fuck? Oh, oh no. Oh. Fuck honor! But it's okay, because it's a demon, right? You know, just like his father. We were a family. I will never forget what he did to her. Another new character, Kat, is completely weak, and she's a half-hearted love interest for Dante. Uh, her purpose is mainly to use her spray can filled with squirrel semen. Yes, squirrel semen. Doesn't smell too good. What's in the can? A compound I created based on an old Wiccan recipe. Sea salt, shark oil, iron shavings, desiccated squirrel semen, wolf hair. Good stuff. 
to create portals between the real world and Limbo while helping Dante and Virgil. She's, she's no Trish, that's for sure. I should have been the one to fill your dark soul with light! light, 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 light. Basically, she reminds me of Lucia, just forced in there to have a female in the game, I guess. But yet she's this reason that Dante all of a sudden starts to care about humanity. I could buy that if she had more to her, but not as she's presented here. Now, Dante's look and how they handle the characters aside, how's the story and more importantly, the gameplay? Well, the story has never really been a strong point of the series. Don't bullshit me, okay? Um, and in this one, they try to modernize it by saying that demons have enslaved the populace through the media. If you see him, inform the police immediately, but do not approach him. He has a history of physical violence and is a known sexual deviant. This is Bob Barbas, just doing God's work. An idea that I think is completely possible. I mean, we've seen it repeat a lie over and over and over enough and many idiots will believe it. And it's kind of like one of my favorite cult films, They Live, which I recommend you go out and see right now. Uh, but here it's backed up by demonic magic, subliminal messages, and uh, spiking humanity's favorite soda. There will be no further questions. Why? Hey, look! The disgusting little men are starting to sing! We've got a friendly warning for you! grunka lunk a dunk a the secret of slurms on a need-to-know basis! Shut the hell up! So, there is kind of a political undertone here that's clear, okay? It's, it's probably gonna piss off... It piss you off if you're a Republican, or if you regularly watch Fox News, as it pokes fun at both. Uh, the demon anchorman Bob is clearly a parody of Bill O'Reilly. We'll do it live. Bill, where are you going? Bill, sit down. No. We'll do it live. Fuck it. Hey, 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 Bill, calm down. I don't like that. Why are you? Do it live. Me? I can. I'll write it, and we'll do it live. Okay, we're gonna do it live, Bill. Fuck it. Are you always this stupid, or is today just a special occasion? Fuck it. Fuck you, Bill. I mean, he even says, do it live during his freaking awesome boss battle, by the way, unlike anything I've ever seen. I'm taking you off the air. You think so? I wouldn't bet on it, you little shit. Mundo is also no longer this omnipotent demon hiding behind different forms. He's now just an evil banker who looks like Lex Luthor. I will control the world through debt. I have absolute power. <laughs> the world is at last your bitch, as am I. A demon in human form that controls everything through debt. I, for one, liked the story. It's, it's a different take from the previous games, but it's a reboot. Um, in the previous games, the world seemed to know already know about demons. Um, and this is one change that I thought was great. It's fun, and it only lasts during this first game anyway. So the gimmick won't overstay its welcome. By the end, you do feel like there's a bigger battle to wage ahead and out there. So for people complaining, the story itself doesn't bring the game down. It's just the characterization of everyone's established favorites that doesn't hold up. Nearly everyone is less likable than before. That's the problem. So, story, characters, my opinion, your opinion, yeah, whatever, okay? What about the gameplay? That's the one thing that needed to be right here. So how is that here? It's good. 
it, it's mixed, it's, but it's good. I mean, the action in DMC is fast, it's intense, and it's engaging, okay? Over the course of the game, you're going to be acquiring new weapons at set intervals, okay? There's going to be eight in total. But without of the different fighting styles of past games, you're now, you're now forced to play the game in a more focused and singular way. Uh, use red weapons to defeat red enemies and use blue weapons to defeat blue enemies. And then dodge at the telegraphed enemy attack. So what this does is it, it does have you switch your weapons in battle often as enemy waves will have both types mixed in. It's all mapped to the directional pad, so switching those weapons mid-combo is possible and allows you to extend your score multiplier. It's freaking easy. It's a breeze. And I found myself hugging my controller, making full use of it. So the speed and the fury is there, perhaps even stronger than the other games. Dante moves more realistically when performing these insane combos. He appears to have natural momentum and believable transitions. So the visual flair combined with the ease of comboing makes this system ultimately fun and satisfying without the multiple fighting styles of old. This is just one that you have to try for yourself. Uh, puzzles and slower sections are replaced with platforming bits that are wonderfully done. How Dante gets around makes you feel super powered as you use either angelic or demonic hooks and claws at certain times. And in a few cases, you will alternate between these uh, with precise timing to get to hard to reach places. Uh, this combined with the double jump and the angel glide makes for some entertaining sections for even people who aren't fans of platformers like myself. However, all these positive things about the gameplay and the critics are glowing about, it's not without its own set of flaws that they seem to ignore. Although the camera is never an issue, thank God, uh, one thing that will annoy you is the lack of a lock-on feature. I mean, oftentimes you'll want to just hook and pull or just plain shoot some of the annoying flying enemies that are chucking bombs at you. But you can't. Why? This is a far cry from when Dante could individually target with his weapons. I'm, I'm not really sure what the design purpose was to intentionally leave this out, but it's, it's a flaw. Also, some melee weapons fall out of usefulness too quickly since three cover all your needs. Uh, Rebellion, Arbiter, and Aquila. And firearms are the weakest they've ever been. Pretty much making Ebony and Ivory, you know those badass guns, a thing of the past. Ebony, Ivory, and Mr. Girls. <laughs> Why not? He's bulletproof. The new style system, it, it's been butchered. Uh, previous games would have the style meter go up rapidly as you do better, but then decrease rapidly. Uh-uh, doesn't do that here. Here, it only decreases when you're hit, which is extremely easy to avoid with dodges. In fact, there's three types of dodges. So, uh, you know, and as people said, performing the same attack over and over, bullshit. That will not net you as many points as varying your attacks does. But it still nets you far too many points, which has the game handing out S rankings like candy. However, I must admit, even with that as fact, pulling off harder moves easier 
is a godsend to some, and that needs to be considered if you aren't normally into these types of games, or maybe you found Devil May Cry 3 or the previous games too hard. Well, you might find it this game as a great new entry into the genre, and I can recommend it to many of my friends from that perspective. So there is a bit of importance there too. I see what Ninja Theory was trying to accomplish here um, with making you feel good about your score. And for the hardcore, there's always five more difficulty levels, okay? There's Dante Must Die mode, which remixes enemy setup and behaviors, which then if you complete unlocks Heaven or Hell mode, where both enemies and Dante die in one hit. And then finally, if you somehow beat that mode, there's Hell and Hell mode, where enemies have full health and are hard, and Dante dies in just one hit. Which is fucking crazy. Though I'm sure some guy on YouTube has probably already done or is about to do it. Um, but for the rest of us, one or two playthroughs will be enough. Um, beating the game, though, will unlock a white hair Dante, which is... Uh, unfortunately, it's still the stupid short white hair version. I'm sure the actual classic look that everybody wants will be paid DLC. This is Capcom after all. There's even a section for it already in the game menu, skins and costumes. As long as it's reasonably priced Capcom, I'll pick it up. If only to clear my mind of the current look of Dante. One thing though that I think everyone can agree on is another major part of the game, the devil trigger. It's a disappointment, okay? I expected to feel like a badass when I harness the full power of my demon blood! But instead, I'm fighting to even hit the enemies as they're all awkwardly thrown up into the air no matter how far away they are simultaneously and I, I don't really have any notice and, and I just, and I don't even see a large damage gain. It, it basically just becomes a way for you to replenish your health as the meter refills a bit while in the mode. Oh, and he also gets the white hair and the red coat, just like old Dante. How cute! Okay, so DMC's greatest strength, though, is that it contains some of the most creative and interesting varied levels and locations, all with thick atmosphere. So these are some of the best levels that I've seen in a while, and that demands credit. Uh, Dante spends most of his time in Limbo, which is in between planes, uh, like a demon realm, where the ground often twists and shifts, morphing itself. Uh, bosses are a visual spectacle. This shit is just cool. However, the larger ones do tend to telegraph their moves a lot, so they don't offer much challenge. Uh, in fact, the ninja demon class of enemy is harder than almost all the bosses in the game, with the exception of the last one, which is a damn good fight worthy of any Devil May Cry game. It should be said, the production value is triple A, okay? Aside from the menus, are crappy. Every single aspect of this game has tremendous thought and detail put into it. And the action looks smooth, even if it's only at 30 frames per second. I didn't notice a difference. It didn't slow down for me. The graphics are above average, the cutscenes are seamlessly integrated into the action, and the motion capture is realistic. So, that brings us to our final verdict for this divisive new stupidly named DMC Devil May Cry Devil May Cry Devil May Cry it is a 7 out of 10 it is a great game but the reboot doesn't necessarily handle all of the parts well it's not bad no matter what anyone tells you and it's not a shining gem that some may think it is all you have to do is replay the HD collection to see the flaws in the combat there. But even with that said, the system is better than a lot of other similar ones out there. Now, I completed the game's 20 missions in about 7 to 8 hours, and that's an average player. Uh, so it's not very lengthy, but it is in line with the previous DMCs. 
Um, and there's also incentive to replay it at least once to get access to keys, which unlock doors to 21 uh, secret side missions, which have, you know, things like time challenges, which reward you with health upgrades. I said it, DMC is a great game. If you're a hardcore fan of Devil May Cry and you love the mythos and everything, and, and the combos and the depth of the combat, you're probably gonna be a little disappointed, but you're probably playing it anyway right now. For the rest of us, this is a game that's immediately more accessible. It's a triple A game, it's got some really awesome shit in it, so, Although it's going to fall just short of my badass seal of approval, I do think that you should go out there and play it if you want, and, and, and especially eventually uh, get your hands on it, if just for the uh, creative boss battles and the excellent level design. I'm encouraged by what can come, as hopefully it continues to improve. But let me make a request, as I know Capcom is going to offer the classic look Dante as DLC, could we possibly get the classic voice and mannerisms too? I mean, think about it, you pretty much nail out all the criticism in one fail swoop. Consider it. Until then, I'll see you guys on the next Angry Joe Show. <laughs> this shit is really bad. Stop!